Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back, fourth graders. Glad to have you for our next session here today. Again, thank you to Mr. Osborne for his, uh, his great story of talking about the uh, the, uh, the sharpshooters, the Verdant sharpshooters, and their impact on the Civil War. Well, we've talked a lot about our heritage. We started with the founding of Tiffin. We look, learned about our Native American heritage. Uh, we've got to learn a little bit about how Kids your age maybe pass the time with games and the entertainment with the music that was provided. Now we're going to spend a little time talking about the civilian life and how they live their life and the tools to do so. So I'll turn it over right now to Mr. Uh, and Mrs. Gary Gundor. Uh, Jan and Gary Gundor are going to give you a demonstration here of the tools that you live your everyday life. But as a reminder before we do that, please use that chat, ask questions, be engaged with our presenter here today. And if you have any technical issues, of course, uh, let us know as well. And this session will also be recorded and available via the, the link for streaming at your convenience later on. So, Mr. and Mrs. Dundor, thank you very much. Thank you. Excuse me. Easier to talk with this off, but I want you to know we are being safe. And I'm Jan. This is Gary. Uh, you can call us Mr. and Mrs., but that's okay. Anyway, we're going to show you some objects. It's kind of a little game. Objects are between 100 and 200 years old. And maybe you've seen some of them. Maybe you haven't. Just to give you a little bit of a background, we've been involved with the Heritage Festival for a number of years. And we love, love history. There's so many things about history that you don't know about, and we hopefully that you'll learn um, a couple few little things that might be of interest. My husband's dressed approximately in 1900 period, and uh, he's wearing a beautiful watch chain, which normally men don't carry any longer, but it's a beautiful pocket watch, and that's his watch fob. And uh, that's sterling silver, beautiful. And he's wearing a boutonniere that a lot of years ago, when my hair was that color, that's my hair. I made some flowers out of it. You can see my hair has changed color. But I'm dressed in 1860s style, uh, which is the Civil War. And if you're not familiar, that's about 160 years ago. And I'm giving you a little bit of a hint. A couple of things I'm wearing, we're going to kind of talk about on the board here. So you might kind of want to pay attention to how I'm dressed, all right? It might give you a little bit of a hint. Now, I know that there's a number of schools and, and classrooms that are watching. So um, maybe, you know, Bridges Academy or Seneca East or, you know, another school could maybe give us a little question or something like this, we'd be really interested to know what you're thinking about, what your questions might be. But let's start with a question and then we'll, we'll show you how it works. We have a number of items and we give you three choices. Could be A, B, or C. Now, if you were here in person, you could then flip the card over and it would show you the answer. But you're not here, so we're going to just kind of tell you the answer, all right? So let's start with our first object, please, honey. He's going to bring it forward so you can see it better. It's too hard to see it on the board back here. And so do you think, I want you to hold up your hand, though, okay? I want you to kind of help vote. We're going to go, A, is that a gambler's card holder? Is it B? a cuff holder, or maybe C, both. Now, who all, remember, hold up your hand. If you're voting for A, the gambler's card holder, or hold your hand up for B, the cuff holder, or C for both. And what's the answer, dear? That would be C. It would be used as a uh, card holder, if a, a card, cheat card, would uh, slip it in his sleeve, put the card in there, and bring it out when he wanted to play it. Or it used to be for uh, the <clears throat> cuffs on your shirts used to be disattached, I would say. Um, and you would uh, put the buttonhole through the cuff and then clip it to your uh, regular shirt. 
that would hold it there. So it had multiple uses, but its real intention, and it was manufactured as a cup holder. But the gamblers kind of thought, hmm, it's going to help them. So they kind of took that idea and used it for their own purpose, which is not the best purpose. All right. So all of you that voted for C, you were correct. Great. Okay, now another item. All right, now, could this be, he's going to hold it up closer to the camera. Is that A, a match safe, B, collapsible cup, or C, a coin purse? Remember, we're voting, so all of you voting for A, the match safe, hold up your hand. Uh, if you think it's a collapsible cup, that's B, hold up your hand. And... If you think maybe the coin purse, that's C. You hold up your hand. Now, I don't know who's voting for what, but what's the answer, dear? It's a collapsible cup. And that's B, which is very handy. Yes, and it's attractive as well. So now some of the items are gonna be smaller or larger that he's going to show you than what's on the board. We just didn't have the identical size items for everything. This is one case where he's gonna show you something much larger than what we have on the board, all right? So keep that in mind. So this item he's showing, could that be an eyelash curler? Mm -hmm. Remember, it's smaller. Um, a mustache curler, B, or a ribbon curler. Now, all those voting for eyelash curler, hold your hand. And B, the mustache curler, hold your hand up. C, ribbon curler. What's the answer, dear? Well, as she showed you, this is much larger than it really needs to be, but it's a mustache curler. You used to heat these up and then put it in the hair and curl it, and it would then pull it out and then form to what it had set, had taken a set. So as you can see, it looks like he uses one. He technically doesn't anymore, but that is how they used to do it years ago, approximately a hundred years ago. So that is a mustache curler. So all of you that voted B, you're correct. Great. Now we have another object here. You want to show it a little bit closer. We have A, a bicycle clip, B, an armband, or C, maybe it's both. Now, all those voting for bicycle clip, do the hand. Uh, an armband, put your hands up. Or if you think it might be both, put your hands up. And the In answer- In this case, it was both again. You used to put them on your sleeve to keep your sleeves from coming down, cuffs coming down and, and on your hand. And get it all dirty. All dirty. Yeah. And then the other use would be you put it down around your pant leg and keep it up and hold it in so your pant leg didn't get caught in your bicycle chain. That's right. Or the bicycle chain didn't get caught in your pants, right? Oh, Either way. Ah, very practical. Now, another item. And this one looks very much like it. Would that be a glove button hook, a shoe button hook, or again, it might even be bow. So, hey, what about mohawk? Did you vote most of you for A, the glove button, or B, the shoe button hook, or C, bow? Everybody that voted for C is correct. And how would that work, dear? So they take the hook and slip it through the buttonhole and get a hook of the bolt, a button on it and pull the button back through and be button your shoes up. Whoops. So what happened? Well, the button let it go. Oh, off. well, gee, I have to sew that back you have to on. Watch out don't how I? hard you pull it and it might pull the buttons off. <laughs> but a lot of times, gloves in the old days, they had a few buttons at the wrist. And so that was practical for that. It's very hard to do otherwise, especially if you have larger hands, it's hard to do. 
So we have another item, and these are, we know them as spats, but there's another name. Do you think it could be A, mutters, B, gators, or C, extenders? Now, how about you at Bridges? Do you have a guess? Would it be A, mutters, B, gators, remember we're voting, and C, extenders? So, which is the right answer? B, gators. And if you remember uh, when Mr. Osborne was telling about the Civil War, they had long gaiters that they would put on mm -hmm. the uh, boots to keep the bugs and everything from coming up their leg. This is more for decorative. Um, when they put on your shoes, it makes it look like a whole different shoe. It's a little dressier and a little yes. bit nicer. Yes. Plus, it keeps your ankles warm. That had an added bonus. So we're done with this board for the moment. So we're gonna do a little switch and we're gonna come over here. All right, did we do that okay? All right, so the next item. Now all of you at Seneca East, your old board, we want you to remember we're all voting and if you have any questions, please let us know. So here's a smaller item than what we have on the board this time. All right, do you have a good look? Could that be? That's not tennis. I know that's not one of the guesses. Oh. All right, okay. could it be A, a rug beater, B, an apple butter stirrer, or C, a bread paddle? What's your guess? All right, any of you from what, Mohawk or Seneca East or Tiffin City Schools, wherever you are, we want to know how you're guessing. All right. So the answer is, dear. Actually, it's a rug beater. That's A. Somebody mentioned about a wife beater, but I. I no, no, no. We don't, don't talk about, about that. that. No, no, no. <laughs> you might have put a throw rug over a tree limb or a clothesline, and then you would take something like that or yeah. that one. Beat the stuff out of it. <laughs> and that would get the dust and dirt out. And that was the early version of a vacuum. They didn't used to have vacuum cleaners. So if you ever see one of those, now you know what they're for, right? Okay, next item. And you'll notice I'm actually wearing one. I like to wear them for jewelry. Could this be a Victorian watch key? a Victorian toothpick, or maybe a Victorian pencil. Now, all of you, I want you to vote again. Remember, A, hold up your hand, Victorian watch key, B, Victorian toothpick, or C, a Victorian pencil. And the answer is? That would be the Victorian pencil. You take the, uh, there's a... Collar. Hmm collar on there, thank you. And uh, you extend the collar out and it brings the lead out and you can use it as a pencil mm -hmm. or you retract it and then you store the lead, the extra lead in the pencil itself. You take the jeweled end off mm -hmm. and put it in there. Yes, and I love to wear them for jewelry. I think that they're extremely attractive. And so I, I enjoy them. That's a vintage version for a regular mechanical pencil and this exact design and so forth is 200 years old. So that's been around for a very long time. And we have another item. He's gonna bring that up a little bit closer and I'm giving you a great big hint. Look at me, okay? And what I'm wearing, how I'm dressed. Well, maybe you saw me earlier. But anyway, would that be A, a skirt lifter, B, a mini clamp, or C, a glove holder? Well, it doesn't matter, I'll lift it up. Um, and the answer, remember you're voting, A, skirt lifter, B, mini clamp, or C, a glove holder. What do you think it is? Well, if you look at me and you look down, 
you'll notice that I've got one clipped to my skirt. It is a skirt lifter. And the ladies would have a cord or ribbon tied on. This would clamp onto the skirt and be able to hold it up. And you would fasten at the top with a watch pin or some kind of fastener at the waistband. Anyway, it holds the skirt up so that you don't drag your skirts in the mud and the dirt. And also it helps keep you from tripping over your skirt. Believe me, I can do that. So um, that is very useful for me. Another item, I think this is very attractive, is could it be A, a Chatelaine pencil case, B, a Chatelaine glasses case, or maybe C, a Chatelaine scissors case. Hmm, it almost could be anything, couldn't it? Dear, what's the answer? Actually, it's the glasses. Yes. Put the glasses in here, and then you clip it onto your belt or your... The waistband. The waistband, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's how they used to carry them. And if you didn't need your glasses all the time, I like, I need my glasses for reading. And so this is what I could carry my glasses in. And I would have it with me anytime I needed them. So I didn't have to have a big purse carrying it around. I could just have it right there. And it would be nice and easy and handy for me. And another item, I think you're going to bring that up, which is different looking, isn't it? Could this be A, a drafter's tool? B, a math, math measurer, or maybe C, a hat sizer. Remember, we're voting. So hold your hands up for A, a drafter's tool. B, a math measurer. Are you giving them hands? <laughs> or C, no. a hat sizer. And the answer is? It's actually a hat sizer. You used to take, put it into the hat let it go let it go and then and you can look at it right and see the size that it, you need to be so that you could buy your next hat and it would fit properly right or yes. your wife could buy it for you hmm. okay we have another item here last but not least oh, well that's right can you see that i hope could that be a a scraper, B, a food pusher, or C, a toy shovel. Now remember, we're voting, okay? Hold your hand up for scraper, A. Hold your hand up for B, food pusher, or for C, a toy shovel. It really looks like it could be any of them, but what's the real answer here? Actually, it's a food pusher. I well, and or like to that. push into a spoon, yeah. maybe, for, for maybe young children. Fruit. For yeah. young children, yes. Sometimes it would be handy for adults, too, but we won't go there. But we have thoroughly enjoyed being with you today. Thank you very and much. And we hope that you see us again, and we might have some different boards and different items. And uh, this time, maybe you'll see us in person, and all you have to do is come look. Make your guess and flip it over and the answer would be there for you. So we hope that maybe you learned a little bit and had a little bit of fun. Thank you for participating. We I'm enjoyed visiting it. us at the Heritage Festival next year. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excuse me, Mary Jan. Thank you again. Uh, that'll bring the end of this session. We have a short, short break, so don't go too far away before our last session here. So thank you again and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Here's a question. Oh, we have a question. How, long, how long did it take you to collect your items? Oh, probably several years because we find things different places, don't we, dear? Yes, we've been collecting for too many years. We don't need to go there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> decades. <laughs> um, yes. But we see them at flea markets, even in our home. Uh, some things have maybe been handed down. They were relatives, a grandparent or something. And uh, 
we might see them at a flea market or an antique show or there's all kinds of ways that we've acquired things again some things have been from relatives yes also it's the thrill of the hunt too when you yes. when you find something uh, interesting uh, i've been looking for this a long time and then you go on to the next thing but i will tell you this the hardest part for us is when you buy something and you know what it is, it's the hardest part is figuring out what it's not. <laughs> so that that really is the harder part. Yeah. Thank you. you. Thank you for this question. For the video. Pardon? How long did you practice for this video? Uh, I'm afraid we didn't practice nearly as long as we probably yeah. should have. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we should have practiced a lot harder. I think and you would think since we've been together yeah. this yeah. long that we would do better, but yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right? But it's been a long journey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but a fun one. Yes. Yes. Thanks for asking. Thank you. Thank you.